Welcome to our video tutorials for getting started with controllers from STW. In this video, we would like to demonstrate the setup of CAN communication between PC and controller and flash a sample application to the controller using the STW PC tool OpenSide. In the first videos of this series, we have shown how to commission a controller from a starter kit in terms of hardware and how to obtain and install the required software. Now we set up the communication interface CAN between the PC and controller. Again, we use the starter kit of the controller ESX3CS. The controller is already running properly and is operated together with the breakout board from the starter kit, as we have shown in the video getting started with the starter kit. There are other components in the starter kit that we need to establish communication via the CAN interface. For this demonstration, we will use the CAN USB interface from Peak and the CAN cable that is included in the kit. Furthermore, we need a Windows PC. The steps that follow now are all described in the user manuals of the controllers in the chapters, getting started and tools. In the starter kit, we find a DVD with drivers from Peak for the CAN USB interface. We can use these drivers for our PC but we recommend downloading the latest version from Peak's internet homepage. So we start the browser and call the homepage of the company Peak. Here we find in the section products, the used interface and the corresponding downloads. We download the device driver We go to the download folder of the PC, unpack the zip file and start the installation of the drivers. It is important that we have administrator rights on the PC for this process. During the installation, we follow the instructions of the installation routine. Now, after the successful installation, we can also connect the interface itself to a free USB port on the PC. The LED on the interface has to light up red. Otherwise, the installation of the driver would have failed. This works as desired. For the next steps, however, we remove the interface once again. To be able to exchange data with STW controllers via the CAN interface, we have to install additional special drivers on the PC. STW's PC tool open side contains an installation routine for this purpose. The following steps are described in the open side help. We go to the folder can driver installation peak in the installation directory of open side and double click the installation routine. We confirm all dialogues. This completes the installation of all drivers for the CAN interface on the PC. Next, we have to set up a CAN network. At this point, we would like to point out that the following steps are also described in the user manuals of the controllers in the chapter Tools. We start the Windows control panel from the Windows Start menu and select Peak Hardware. On this PC, there is only our just installed USB interface which we can select. Next, we start the program Pick and Nets configuration and set up a network in connection with our CAN USB interface, e.g. with the name TestNet. The other parameters don't matter at first.
The software preparation of the CAN USB interface is now completed, and we can establish the hardware connection of PC and controller via the breakout board of the starter kit. For proper operation of a CAN line, a termination with 120 ohms at each end of the line is required. A switchable 120 ohm resistor is integrated in the connector on one side of the CAN cable. We connect this side to the CAN USB interface and plug it back into the USB interface of the PC. The other side is connected to the CAN1 interface on the breakout board. On the breakout board in the CAN termination field, there's also a row of switches that can be used to switch on 120 ohm resistors for the CAN1 and CAN2 interfaces. We make sure that this is the case. With this, the communication path between the PC and the CAN1 interface of the controller is ready to be set up. For testing the CAN communication, it is easiest to start up the example supplied in the target support package on the controller. The example includes a ready-made open side project and a programming project for the application. We get the fastest access via OpenSide. We start OpenSide and open the example project from the TSP of the ESX3CS. We had installed the TSP under CSDW and we find the example in this directory. The example shows a controller ESX3CS with connected CAN and Ethernet interfaces. For the controller, various parameters are set on the CAN 1 interface, such as node ID and CAN bitrate. However, we will only use the CAN 1 interface in the following demonstration of the communication between OpenSide and the controller. We now test the communication by using device configuration to transfer these parameters to the controller. For this, we have to go to the so-called system commissioning area in OpenSide. In our example, two configurations, so-called views, are provided here. Since our PC is connected to the CAN interface, we use view 2, CAN. Here we execute the device configuration. We are searching for the controller. Through this function, commands are sent from the PC to the controller via the CAN USB interface. We can already see from the blink code of the LEDs that communication is taking place. The controller responds to the commands and transmits its current configuration, e.g. serial number and node ID. In OpenSight, it is indicated that the controller was found. We drag and drop the found controller onto the controller drawn in the project, the so-called topology node. With this, we set in OpenSide that the parameters of the topology node should be transferred to the real connected controller. We click Configure Devices and wait for the configuration process. This was successful. We leave the configuration mode and recognize this also by the LEDs of the controller. So we can communicate with the controller via OpenSide and the CAN interface. We would now like to bring the sample application onto the controller. The process for this in OpenSide is called update. In our example project, everything is prepared for this, which means a hex file is already available that can be flashed to the controller. We see the prepared hex file as part of a so-called update package. By clicking on Enter Update Mode, OpenSide establishes the connection to the flash loader on the controller. We recognize this by the blink code of the LEDs on the controller. In this mode, OpenSide can determine whether the hex file on the controller and the hex file in OpenSide are different. If this is the case, as it is here, OpenSight indicates that the controller should be updated, i.e. flashed with the hex file from OpenSight. We do this by clicking on Update System and can now observe the progress of the flashing process. The process has been completed successfully. By exiting the update mode, 
A reset is performed on the controller and the sample application is now running. We can see this again by the blink code of the LEDs. We will not go into the details of how the dashboards were programmed to operate inputs and outputs via OpenSide in this demonstration. At this point, I would like to refer you to the videos in the OpenSide series where we go into these topics in detail. However, for another test of communication, we'll go online with one of the dashboards. We can already see from the measurement of the CPU temperature and the supply voltage, which I change here for demonstration. Even independent of flashing, OpenSide can communicate with the controller via the CAN interface while the application is running. We are now able to communicate with the controller from the PC via OpenSide and the CAN interface. We also flashed a ready-made sample application to the controller and saw a simple measurement performed by this application via a dashboard. In the next video of this series, we will look at how to program an application ourselves. I wish you much success with the controllers from STW.